Good morning or afternoon, everybody. This is Eureka Street Creative Podcast, and I'm Eureka John. This is episode number 512, April 19th, 2024. I am broadcasting live, live streaming on unlonely.app, and this is a web free streaming platform and uh, just experimenting with stuff like I always do. And this is, I'm, I'm committing myself to do kind of a weekly check-in just to, uh, even just sometimes just to say hi. If I don't have a whole lot to talk about, I will still just flap my, my gums about something. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm broadcasting from, I got to say it, Leander, Texas. That's how I say it. And uh, been involved in a lot this week. I had a lot going on with Crypto Sapiens. Um, Crypto Sapiens is, as you know, as you may know or you may not know, is one of the main projects that I work on with Humpty Calderon and the rest of the team there. And um, I've really enjoyed my time there. I've been doing Crypto Sapiens stuff for shoot, going on three years now. And um, you know. I guess I've been promoted to like co-founder or whatever, but um, it's it's cool. I just have a lot of uh, feeling of ownership in the project, and um, yeah, not making any money from it, but um, it is what it is. And this it's it's been like a, a great place. Um, in addition to this, ex- totally experimental podcast, but to be able to like really hone my skills on a professional level, and Crypto Sapiens is really expanding out quite a bit. Um, we have been doing uh, stuff. We've been putting our podcasts up on pods.media and we have been minting things on Zora. We are getting ready to go launch onto Hypersub, which I will talk about Hypersub with fabric.xyz. And um, yeah, it's hypersub.withfabric.xyz. And then I mean, there's, there's been a lot of stuff going on on that front and I've been experimenting with my own stuff with Hypersub and I'll show you all here in just a second. It's, it's been super cool. And I worked with also a podcast um, and I told you about it last week, uh, The State of People and uh, Riley Beans put out a bounty and he's looking for a producer, somebody to produce the live stream. We went back and forth through tons of different options using like video.ninja and OBS and all that. And as much as I want to say, you know, oh, we did all this open source and everything, it's, it it doesn't seem quite there yet. Or maybe my skill level is not there yet. I don't know. Um, But uh, we ended up going with using StreamYard, which is a Web2 centralized service um, to do live streams. There's, uh, if you're familiar with StreamYard, Squadcast, Zencaster, Riverside.fm is what Bankless uses. Um, there's just you know, all these different Web2 um, just centralized platforms that are streaming services that you pay to stream. You know, at, ideally and ethically and all that. I mean, not ethically. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using like Web2 services, but like in the spirit of Web3 and open source software, I always want to try to gravitate towards using like open source stuff. Um, so, but I, the way that Video Ninja here, I'll pull it up here on the screen just so you can kind of take a look. Um, okay, that's Twitter. Let me go over here to Video.Ninja and uh, take a, a little gander here. Video.Ninja. I mean, it's it's a really cool service and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. You can replace the Zoom with it. You can add it to OBS and create a scene. But as far as like what the state of people was trying to do with like seven guests and all this type of scene switching type of stuff, um, it it just ended up n- not being quite there yet. And that's what it, you run into with a lot of like open source stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but like the skill level learning curve is so high as sometimes, and, and we had like two days to figure this out. So we ended up just using StreamYard and you know, there's nothing wrong with StreamYard. You know, here's StreamYard right here. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a great platform and it did the job and it got what we needed to do. And we had some really amazing guests on there. Um, one of them was Crystal Street, and here's her blog on Paragraph. 
And, you know, she talked about like the narratives that divide us. So this blog post here is one of the, um, some of the talking points that she talked about. And, um, one thing that came up during the state of people show and state of people was streamed on, um, on unlonely app, which is what I'm doing right now here too. And, um, one thing that came up was the whole idea that, um, unlonely and all these web three tools and this open source stuff, the way that we're trying to use it right now just feels a lot like, like, um, original public television, you know, UHF. If you've ever seen the movie UHF with weird Al Yankovic, it's one of the best movies of all time in my personal opinion, but it just really captures the spirit of like, anything goes like bring out the weird bring out the weirdness like bring out just people who want a stage to be on people who want some kind of want their message to get out even if they don't want to be on stage but they the message is more important than their stage fright um and and you know it's and the the, the motive is not to make money you know and that's what public television and uhf television and all that brought about and i think that is what is is happening right now with with platforms you know these these open source tooling like video.ninja and obs software and then unlonely.app so let me go ahead and uh pull up unlonely.app homepage uh, or if, if it'll just might just pull up this stream well here's the stream so i mean if you're watching it on unlonely you know obviously you know about it but if you're not watching it on unlonely and you're just watching this on youtube Go over there and take a look. So what you have to do first is you have to go up here in the corner and you know, you're going to have to like, you know, get a MetaMask wallet or one option with unlonely.app is you can connect to using your, your email. So you don't have to use your wallet necessarily to see the content and stuff like that or to create some kind of um, profile for this. But there's all these channels and people that have created stuff and it's pretty amazing. So if you're watching this on YouTube, like really please start to poke into some of the web three content creation platforms and, and tools and all that stuff and art and everything. It literally is like public television of the 1980s and nineties and the movie UHF with weird Al Yankovic. And if you love that movie, you're going to love everything that's coming out. Like a lot of people have this like misconception that crypto is all about, you know, speculation and even now meme coins, <laughs> you know, the, the computer game or the, in the casino and all that stuff. And, you know, there, there is that aspect, but there's, a huge public television aspect going on right now of just all the weirdness coming out and including myself right now. Like literally I have this message and I love experimenting with new technology and here I am just like doing this, you know? So th that being said, I also have just been like poking around and creating art too. And, and I have to create my content to be able to play around with these tools. Well, I created a hyper sub and um, I'm not on the front page here. I'm not really sure what gets you on the front page. And it's okay. I don't need to be on the front page. But there's all these things, these artists and these projects that you can subscribe to. And you basically pay, you know, like whatever they set as there's the state of people, the one that I worked on this week. Um, you, you, creators can set their price. And like this one here is $23 a month. And with that $23, you can get like full access to automod.sh, whatever that means, but uh, install as many channels as you want, uh, process 500,000 casts a month. Okay, so I mean, I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty cool, you know, but that's just an example. Uh, you know, here's what the State of People podcast is 0 0.003 ETH a month, which is um, I'd say probably like $11, maybe $12. I don't know. It's $10. Yeah, it depends on the price of ETH. But, um, you know, with that, you get recaps of each show, monthly show flyers, clip airdrops from speakers and whatever else they scheme up, you know? So, yeah, you know, I think that's pretty cool. And I created my own as well. So let me see here. I will go to my profile and here's mine. I don't really know how to, um, you see, I've subscribed to GM Farcaster Cup of Mole and Grill of Sun, um, and I have to figure out like all the the ins and outs and the basics of this. Um, but you know, I've okay. These are drops that I've collected right here, uh, or these are these are drops for me. So the people that I've subscribed to, 
um, they they all show up in one place, and I and I think that one of the the benefits of hypersub is like the convenience, you know, of because if you're following an artist and they might drop something on Zora, then they might write a blog about it on Paragraph, and then they might you know do something else on another platform, and it just you want to support these artists, but it just becomes like almost like a full-time job trying to be intentional about collecting all their stuff. Um, so in this case, uh, you don't have to be like it, everything just goes into one place. So here's my Eureka street, you know, homepage Just this picture here, this icon that I've used as my PFP quite often, um, is also like a, a painting on canvas, actually an old roommate of mine. She, bought it off me and took it with me back up to New York. I wonder if she knows that this is now an NFT and maybe one day it'll be worth something, but, <laughs> you know, but you can mint it for 0.01 ETH on here. And, uh, here's the details of it. It's on the base network and you know, it, there's me, the owner, um, 4% goes to protocol fee. Um, 86% goes to the contract contract creator, which is me. Um, and then, yeah, yeah. So there's all made a debt made a data and all that stuff. And you can also gift subscriptions to people. So I think this whole use case of an NFT is really cool. And I think this is, I think personally, I think it's the future. And you can create frames with it and drop it on Farcaster and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, I've also um, minted, I minted last week's podcast here. Um, was it? Oh, shoot. Is this episode 511 or 512? I don't know. I, I'll have to figure that out. So if that was episode 510, or did I have that week wrong? Okay, no. So I, I'm going to go ahead and just change this text out here. This is per standard with me to completely like do this stuff and get it wrong. But yeah, yeah like I said, I experiment with lots of stuff. Um, so anyway, so that was last week's podcast episode. You can mint it. And, um, yeah, I put it on Zora and that's one really cool thing that, uh, people can do with their content. Now, um, let me go over here to my, my homepage here, Eureka street creative podcast. I'm going to manage my collections. All right. So let me go to my profile dashboard and, um, Let's see. I mean, I'm obviously not a popular artist, so, you know, I've like sold zero and all that, but it's okay. It's not why I'm doing this. Um, well, I wanted to show you the paintings that, you know, I've, I've been creating paintings with my kids and uh, it's just something that we do together, you know, and I try to do it as much as possible. Um, here's two. I, I know I've created more than this. I, I've created two more paintings that I've posted up on here. Um, let me go to my Twitter feed and let's go to my profile. See, so yeah, I have to go to my own Twitter feed to like figure things out. All right. Um, and there, or I can go to my Warpcast feed, but, um, here, okay. So here's one of the paintings that I've made future days. I just made this last Sunday with my kids. It's, you know, it's not amazing art, but, um, you know, it is what it is and it's, it's pure. It's like with my kids and it's creative time and they create a little something on canvas. I create a little something on a canvas and, um, you know, I just posted it up on, uh, on Zora and I minted it. So this will be here forever and you could buy that at 0 0.002 ETH, which is like nine bucks. I think, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I just think it's pretty cool and pretty novel and it's a great way to like do content. And here's another one that I made that's for sale up on Zora as well. Um, yeah, I'm shamelessly shilling my own stuff, but like, it's not really what it's about. It's about like me demonstrating what you can do with your art. Um, you know, if somebody really wanted enough, all they have to do is message me and I could send them the original canvas. Um, so yeah, you know, pretty cool. You know, I, I don't know. I just think it's, pretty rad all this new content creation stuff that's out like people get scared of technology um you know they i, I don't know you know it's, it's like 
the most ingrained people in technology hate everything that's happening in crypto right now. Um, like IT dudes and you know, just kind of like, you know, it's a scam, you know, Ugh. you know, and art photographers and artists who only stick to vinyl or photography mediums are super antagonistic a lot of times towards NFTs because they're just associated with crappy art and meme coins. Um, well, you know, a lot of times the people who are the innovators you know, in technology are not necessarily good artists, but they know how to like operate a technology and, or they're figuring it out, you know, it's just like I am. I'm like not a good artist, but like I'm figuring out this technology. I want to see like a really good artist, like come on here and like make some really cool stuff. And there are, if you go into Zora, you know, and, and there's more and more people like figuring out all this stuff and like, you know, how to make some really cool stuff like Zora has like some incredible art on here. I don't know, maybe not on the homepage, but you know, you can just go in there and explore, you know, you find some just really cool stuff <laughs> you know? like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. Um, another thing I've been trying to figure out lately too, is like the whole D gen token. Um, you know, call me old and you know, whatever, but, um, you know, DGen token is, uh, oh, what's up? <laughs> uh, we actually have somebody tuning in on the unlonely thing. Um, yeah, thanks. I can't see who you are because it's like a, a, an ETH address, but you bought a badge. And um, I don't know what the badge does yet. I'm still figuring it out, but we'll all figure this out together. Um, so uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So DGen token. Um, let me see. I had bookmarked on Twitter, amazing to see the sheer number of transactions on the DGen chain. We're build, we're proud of our builders and the community support. Building and using the chain has surpassed our wildest expectations. We hope to keep driving progress forward. Now, this is what is called like an L3 chain. And if you're not familiar, like Ethereum is what's called an L1, layer one chain. It's like the base blockchain. And then because like transactions, because you need gas, which is it's called gas, but you basically need the ETH token in order to be able to do transactions. And what the token does on a blockchain, it prevents attacks. And, and you know, if somebody has to pay something, even if it's a little something, if somebody has to pay for something, it makes an attack expensive. And a lot of these people trying to attack these, these blockchains and make them and break them, um, they would take a lot of attacks and a lot of transactions in order to be able to make that blockchain um, unusable and and you know and basically take it over, and um, so that's what the the gas fee does. One, it rewards the people who run these nodes to be able to make the blockchain operate to verify transactions, but two, it Im it imposes a cost on any would be attackers. So Ethereum is is the gas is quite high if you're trying to do transactions. So they created like a layer two, which is things like Polygon and Arbitrum and Base and all these other layer two blockchains that go on top of it. And what those layer twos do is they do a bunch of transactions, they roll them up and they bundle them up and they, they do all the transactions there. Then they go and certify and verify those transactions later on on the layer one Ethereum blockchain. So it's like the side chain, chain going on at the same time as Ethereum and just going back and just double checking with Ethereum that all those transactions were correct at some point and verifying those. So now um, DGEN is a layer three blockchain because it started off as a layer two on the base chain, but now they've moved it over to layer three. And I'm still trying to get my head around this, but what like a layer three is, is like an application specific uh, blockchain layer to be able to do things specifically um, that DGen would do or any other token specifically. So DGen is specific to Warpcast, which is an app on Farcaster, a social media app. If you aren't involved in Warpcast, go over to it. It's really cool. It's like um, a really amazing alternative to Twitter. And like I said, um, a Web3 alternative. And at the beginning of this show, I was talking about like public television and UHF and just all the weirdness and randomness and, you know, the, the honesty that, that comes out whenever you have like a new, you know, technology that people aren't there just to, to monetize or people aren't there just to, you know, um, 
I don't know. Okay, a question came up in the State of People um, uh, show yesterday. Somebody said, well, don't you worry about you know the pressure in Web3 of people having to um, grow their projects and monetize their projects? That would, I guess, take the honesty out of it. And I really don't think so. I think the people that are in Web3 creating content right now aren't necessarily creating content for the money. And I'm sure not, you know, <laughs> I'm not making any money doing this. I, I think it, it is kind of this like sweet, uh, what Johnny Mac calls it, the, the Goldilocks zone where we are right now. And um, it's this sweet spot of, you know, the big boys haven't really shown up yet, you know. And so all the little people are down here trying to like, you know, figure it out and bring in their weirdness to the stage and experimenting and then some people that have mastered it are, are not even ma nobody's really mastered this but like they're 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 more free to express themselves because the technology is not quite understood by the people who would be the ones to clamp down and regulate it later or completely monetize it and and you know dilute a lot of the what makes it special um i don't know yeah so but anyway, the, back to the DGEN token. Um, yeah, so DGEN is what runs on Warpcast. And uh, it basically, it's been touted as like if you go to a casino and you buy the chips, you know, <laughs> uh, it's not, it is real money, but it doesn't feel like real money. So it has a specific use case of like tipping and, and uh, you know, I don't know. So let's read about it. So one of the most active and fastest growing communities in the Farcaster ecosystem is getting its own Layer 3 blockchain. The DGen chain was announced today by pseudonymous founder J Jacek, I think, or Yasek, and infrastructure provider Syndicate, debuting with its native gas token DGen touted as one of the first community tokens with its own L3. Um, it launched in January with a channel on Farcaster and... Uh, frequently positioned as crypto-friendly alternative to Twitter, that's Farcaster, or Warpcast. And then, okay, so since token claims in January, 53,000 DGEN holders have already made over 553,000 transactions. This article came out on March 28th, so there's been a lot more since then. And uh, and Syndicate said, mostly tipped as a reward for posting quality content. A dedicated DGEN blockchain was the next logical step. So DGEN themselves, they posted, token claims are officially live on DGEN tips. After connecting your wallet, you should see a claim button where the countdown timer at launch. Okay, so the one amazing thing about Farcaster is they allow people to create content and then people um, can tip in there and they, they tip this DGEN token for good quality content. And you can also turn your content into frames and with buttons on them, so where people can mint your content, they can do all types of stuff. You know, they can you can create polls, so it's like interactive content. Um, so let's see here. Here's the DGen Tips website. Turning content into currency, DGen and ERC20 token launched January 2024 has reshaped Farcaster ecosystem by enabling casters to reward others with DGen for posting quality content. Um, yeah, there's been a couple airdrops. I haven't necessarily uh, participated in any of this. Um, and uh, you can bridge from, let's check out this bridge here. I'm just kind of curious. Um, would this be bridging from uh, <laughs> base to DGen or? Uh, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, you can bridge from the layer two up. So um, yeah, Optimism, Zora, uh, Polygon plus one more, so a base and Arbitrum, yeah, and then you can ba you can bridge up to DGen. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. There's a lot going on with DGen and you know, the the meme coins and stuff like that right now. Um, I'm I'm pretty curious. Of course, Polygon's going to criticize it. Uh, here's an article uh, with. The Polygon, Polygon Lab CEO criticizing Ethereum Layer 3 networks um, as DGen mints millionaires. Uh, however, the price of DGen in like the past week has like dropped by like shoot, like 60 something percent. I can't get this web page to pull up right now, so it's not really that important. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Like I said, I don't even look at price anymore. You know, I'm, I'm just into it, just kind of like dorking around on all this tech. 
and um, yeah, it's just really cool. So I don't know, like go check out um, Crystal Street's blog here. Go check out Zora. Uh, go check out Hypersub. Not just my page. I don't even know if you could find my page on there. Um, I'm still kind of getting my head wrapped around a lot of this stuff. Um, if you want to know like what's going on specifically with a lot of Farcaster stuff, this podcast right here, Many Such Cases, is a great one to check out. Um, and look at all the subscribers. Like they're doing really good. <laughs> and um, you know, the, these Johnny and Ted and they're really just like neck deep in all the Farcaster stuff going on and all the new stuff. Um, if you aren't good at coding and you want to create like a Farcaster frame, um, Nanar.com. This is a really good. <laughs> what does it say? Wownar Nanar. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like fun little stuff like that on web pages. Um, so yeah, um, so here's the frame studio. You don't have to know how to code in order to create frames. Um, let me go over here to Warpcast and um, let, let's. I just want to show you an example of a frame. Um, if I can find one on here, yeah, okay. So you know, paragraph, uh, paragraph or no, Toka here. Anytime a um, a an NFT is posted about from Zora, I believe, on Warpcast. Well, Toka will pick it up and automatically create a frame. And here is a frame, and you can approve for 11 and enjoy. Um, yeah. Here's another frame. I speak nerd. He's pretty rad. I've, I've actually met him in person a few times. Um, he's been neck deep in the Farcaster scene for a while. Um, so let's see building tools for tabletop. I'm not really sure what tabletop is, um, but he knows a lot about a lot of the apps. So this is a frame. So you can read in line, you can subscribe, you can mint this on paragraph. Um, so let's just take a quick look. I'll, I'll see about subscribing to, to his newsletter. Um, yeah. So terminally on chain by YB. Okay. Oh, that's what he recommends. So Zero X Nerdery also recommends Terminally on Chain by YB. Okay, so I could subscribe to that. All right, so might as well shoot. You know, if if I speak nerd likes it, then I'll probably like it too. So yeah, and that, that's the point. So you can collect these this paragraph X Y Z. You know, you can mint it. Um, I'm gonna have to read this later, but I'll go ahead and just collect this. And uh, gas prices are high, 0. 0.000777 ETH. Wow, so what is that, six cents? <laughs> uh, dude, anyway, I just minted your article, I Speak Nerd. I'm going to save this and read it in a little while. Um, and uh, let me go over here, just double check the um, chat. Okay, so nothing in my chat for Unlonely, but I'm going to go ahead and just take this time to sign off. I have my Crypto Sapiens weekly meetup. Um, and there's, we, we have another episode of Are We There Yet with DeFi Ginger, aka Chris Eberly, coming out today on Crypto Sapiens. We have uh, an episode with John Ruth and his new show, Impact Maker, episode two will be coming out. And uh, that's pretty rad. And um, his guest was uh, Pedro. I can't remember the name. Or it was a Carl. Sorry, I can't remember the name right now. Uh, but it was this guy that lived in Honduras for a while. And he, he was a, he's a scuba diver and was doing all these beach cleanups and started recruiting a lot of people together to create like a micro crypto economy with the locals there in Honduras, not just backpackers, not just trust fund hippie backpackers, but like like local locals and started getting them all using cryptocurrency and like creating an impact for beach cleanup. Cause you know, a lot of times locals in a spot where you go to that's really touristy, they don't really participate in a lot of like the local impact stuff like beach cleanup because like they're working six or seven days a week and the few hours or day that they have off for, for their little wages, they don't want to go spend working again, which I, I can't blame them. But, you know, um, this crypto economy has kind of inspired people down there 
the locals to be able to like work on that stuff. So anyway, John Ruth talks with him about all that on this next episode of Impact Makers coming out. So don't miss that one. That's that's going to be coming out, I believe, next Friday. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So ah, just rambling, dude. You know, um, it's Friday. So I will go ahead and uh, I will talk to you all next Friday. I'm just going to do another weekly touch base. And I'm going to keep doing this. And hopefully I'll have another way to experiment with this. Maybe I'll try to uh, broadcast in a different way and see how it works out. So I uh, will my smoothie beets cucumbers pineapples um, berries yeah and honey lots of honey <laughs>